Will there be an end to the ongoing war in Gaza? Well, there has been a recent flurry of activity around the talks, with a boost of optimism about progress. The militant group Hamas is sending its delegation to Cairo to discuss a deal for a truce and the release of hostages in Gaza. Hamas says its delegates are traveling to Cairo in a positive spirit. After studying the latest proposal for a truce agreement, the reports come hours after U.S. CIA Director William Burns arrived in the Egyptian capital. Reports also suggest Hamas and CIA officials will meet Egyptian mediators today, although it is still unclear whether they will meet separately or together. The latest effort to halt almost seven months of war with Israel comes as this, since the breakout of war, a major stumbling block to the ceasefire talks has been that Hamas has demanded a lasting ceasefire. While Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to crush its remaining fighters in the far southern city of Rafah, which is packed with displaced civilians. Now, according to reports, Israel has given Hamas a week to agree to a ceasefire deal or the invasion of Rafah will begin. On the other hand, a top Hamas official has accused the Israeli Prime Minister of trying to derail the proposed Gaza truce and hostage release deal with his continuous threats to keep fighting the militants. Now, as negotiations continue to halt the war in Gaza, Israel's longtime ally, the United States, will host Jordan's king next week. According to White House Press Secretary, President Joe Biden will host Jordan's King Abdullah II. Now, the meeting is said to be private, which will be followed by a readout. While well, from within the United States, scores of lawmakers from President Biden's Democratic Party have released their concerns that they believe there is sufficient evidence to show that Israel has violated U.S. law by restricting humanitarian aid flows into the war-stricken Gaza. A letter to Joe Biden signed by some 90 members of the Congress say that Israel's Aid restrictions call into questions its assurances that it was complying with the U.S. Foreign Assistance Act provision. Under this, the recipients of the U.S. funded arms are required to uphold international humanitarian law and allow free flows of U.S. assistance. Meanwhile, the EU diplomacy chief, Joseph Borrell, says Europe needs a united stance on the ongoing war. He says, Europe needs to take action and not just voice their stance on declarations. If we believe that the two-state solution is the only solution, then the international community has to engage much more, taking this not as the starting point, but as the end game point. And we have to tell to the ones who say that they don't want the two-state solution, what do they want? Yes, you don't want it. What is your solution then? Now, India has issued a travel advisory for its nationals in Israel. In light of the recent events in the region, India has urged its nationals to stay calm and adhere to the safety protocols issued by local authorities. Months after the war in West Asia broke out, the hostage situation remains grim. According to reports, an Israeli who was thought to have been abducted by Hamas during the October 7th attacks has been declared dead by officials after his body was found in Israel. While on the war front, the militant group Hamas has released footage of them fighting from south of Lebanon. Hamas's armed wing said its militants in Lebanon's south launched a slew of rockets at a northern Israeli military position. The latest attack comes as its powerful Lebanese ally, the Hezbollah, has exchanged near daily fire with Israeli forces across the border. And on the maritime front, Yemen's Houthi rebels have yet again threatened that they will extend their attacks on Israel-bound ships to the Mediterranean. Houthis, who say they are acting in support of Palestinians during the Israel-Hamas war, said the escalation would take effect immediately. For all the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.